I was having flashbacks. <laughs> and uh, I was like, wow, the good old days, huh? But then I, was, I started thinking, and that gets me in trouble, but that's besides the point. I said to, uh, I started thinking about what Uncle Danny had to say and um, about figuring things out. And really, you put my mind at ease a little bit, just a little bit, because I know it's true. We all know it's true. Um, but why do we keep driving ourselves crazy? I mean, it's so great. We, we wrote a song. There's a song, right? And... Um, You know, if you really could put your finger on it, then I'd almost have to start questioning, is it really God? Because I really don't know, have a clue what he has to do or say. We have an inkling, but we really don't know. We don't. But we have to trust him. And that's what makes you crazy. Seriously, you have to trust him. You gotta have faith that he's he's gonna do everything that he said he's gonna do. Yeah. We, we just got done singing the song that we're crazy, and I I believe wholeheartedly we are crazy. Why are we so crazy? Because I happen to believe everything that he said that he's gonna do or has done. I believe everything. Do I understand it all? Absolutely not. Don't even have a clue about a lot of it. A lot of it's getting erased. And I'm telling you what, he's just, just something about him which just keeps making me come back. Keep coming back. Keep coming back. I was literally, I was like, this could be one of these new Thursday night specials. <laughs> Uncle Danny, you started it. We got the same routine. Seriously, the same routine. And I said, you know what? Tonight could be the night that I'm going to break the routine. Amen. And the routine is, I have nothing to say. I do. And you know what happens? It started happening. So, I, so we start singing this song, and this is what happens. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Um... We start, I get in the middle of everybody here, and we start singing and stuff, and then all of a sudden, I don't even know if he's talking to me, or he's smacking me, or he's just saying, listen, just listen to the songs. And I said, all right. And that's what I do. I just listen. You got anything heavy to say tonight? Yeah, I do. How about this? Everybody got your Bible? Read it. I got to tell you what, it's the only thing that's going to keep you. I got a young man and he's reading a book. This book is this thick and it's How to Be Rich. The book is just literally this thick. Now my father, he had a Bible that was this thick. Now I'm down to this. And you know what? I'm so lazy that I can even have it played to me all day long. I don't have to read it. Mom, it's the truth. I have a Bible program which says audio, so I can do that. And I can sit there remembering my father, swinging a hammer at my house. We're building my house, and he's got the Cadillac doors wide open, and he's got a, CD, a cassette player going, and it's blaring the Bible out. There. And I'm like, are you absolutely getting anything out of this? It, it, you start wondering. But all of a sudden, things start coming up. But this is what really drives me crazy. I believe his promises. 
And there was one thing that I, I said to the Lord tonight. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to read just a few verses. We had flashbacks of songs. I'm going to give you the flashback of the Bible. All right? So if everybody got your Bibles, open up to Deuteronomy 28. Yeah, there's a 28 in Deuteronomy. I'm going to read. Now, Deuteronomy 28 has a lot of verses. I mean, it goes all the way down to 68. 68 verses. But you want to know something what's really amazing? The verse... The first 14 verses are all the blessings. And from 14 to 68 are all the curses. And guess what? I'm not reading any of them. I'm only going to read the blessings. All right? And I'm going to read it because it smells in here, and we're going to go home because I don't want to go home with a headache. All right? So here comes our deep word for the, for the evening. For our Thursday night tonight is going to be a very deep word. And I'm going to read it out of the King James Bible. Deuteronomy 28, verse 1. And it, shall, and it shall come to pass. So if you want to know what it shall come to pass is, you have to read everything in the book of Deuteronomy. Matter of fact, start from Genesis and work all the way up to here. All right? Because if you want to know where you're going, you start from there and you read to the end of the book and you'll find out where you're going. Here's where you're going. You started out in Him, you're going to return in Him. He was the king at the beginning, He's the king at the end. And all he wanted to do is in between the end and the beginning, he just wanted to ride on humanity all through all of it to show them that, hey, I'm king, I'm God, and I'm here to bless you. Not the way you want to be blessed, but the way I intended it. Not me. You know what I mean. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I have commanded thee this day. Now when I heard that, when I read that and I heard this day, it takes me over back in the Hebrews when it says, today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Right? Because we know what happened to these people, but His Word is still true. It's still alive. It has never changed. It's the same. So if He said it back then, He's still saying it today. He's just using another vessel to say the same exact thing. Hearken to the voice of the Lord. Because if you don't hearken to the voice of the Lord, we can skip all the way down to verse 15 and start reading all the curses. God don't have curses, really. I don't know if he said he takes them away or not, but I'm going to tell you what, I don't want to find out. Am I getting loud? So today, 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 Don't put off tomorrow what you can do today. As today is still today, hearken. Hear his voice. Hear what he has to say. He might sell you some sweet stuff. Really? He will. Read the book of uh, Song of Solomon. The best love book you ever read. You like those good romantic novels? Read that one. All right. Now I got off the trail. I got to get back. See, this is what happens when I put commas in 
stuff, even though it's there. I, I have to get my way back. That the Lord thy God will set thee on high, on high above all nations of the earth. You want to know what nations I want he, him to set me high? This one. This is the greatest nation I want conquered. Because everything else is... It's, time has proven it's... Right? Roman, the Romans, right? They were the greatest, greatest of ever. And guess what happened? They came tumbling down. King Nebuchadnezzar, remember that day when he was out there and he was looking over his kingdom? Look at what I have done. And God said, really? Okay, now I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Because you said that in your heart. And guess what? This is what's going to happen. Thank God it's the New Testament. He don't do things like that no more. Really? America? You don't think God does that? See, God doesn't do it. God will allow it. How can something good do something bad? Sweet water and bitter water don't come out of the same well, can it? God just allows it. I heard, I heard something strange today that God used all these nations to punish his children, to discipline them. Did you think he stopped? It's just a thought. Verse 2. And all these blessings shall come on, come on thee and overtake thee if thou wilt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Now he said it twice, but guess what? He put something in there. All these blessings are going to overtake you. How would you like to be blessed so much that they overtake you? Listen, America. God has blessed this country Far beyond what you can, and we've fallen away because He's blessed us so much. Seriously. And you don't even have to be wealthy to fall away in the blessings of what the Lord has done with this nation. Verse Verse 3. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shalt thou be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, and the increase of thy kin, and the flock of thy sheep. Blessed shalt thou be, shall be thy bask, basket and thy store. So basically, this is what he's telling you. He's going to bless you in everything that you need. Bless. Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and will flee seven. Completeness. You know what that means? When they flee, they're not coming back. See, remember, pastor used to say this all the time. The devil, he's so stuck in his routine, he keeps doing the same thing over and over and over again. He can't get out of it. He slithers in. He slithers out.
if I can get them, I got them. Why change it? It's been working all this time. He thinks it's been working. But there is a man child. There is a son that is rising up. Okay. That's what the word says. I believe the word. I'm, right, I'm going to go back. Lord, I'm going to go back to read the word. The Lord shall establish thee, thee and holy people unto himself. That's what I just said. And he, shall, and he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways... And all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. Amen. Thank you, Brother Bud. Believest thou this? The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. You want the treasures of the Lord? I'm finding out that it don't run dry. And I'm not talking about money. We got a well was deep down inside. We let the enemy come in and throw some dirt on there, but it's about time that we start digging the wells again. Start digging it out. Start letting it flow. You might have to get a pump with a long piece of pipe on there and start pumping it. But once it starts going, it's going to start gushing out. All right. The Lord shall open unto thee, unto thee his good treasure. The heavens to give the rain unto thy land in this season and to bless all the works of thy hand. What? You mean when I go to work, he's going to bless it? Oh, yeah. But there is no but. You might have to go through some pit time before you get to the throne room, but you guess what? God's ultimate intention is he's getting you to the throne room. And he just puts us in everyday work situations, the blessing of your hands, to show you how to discipline you, to keep a smile on your face, to keep a right attitude. Because you want to really know something? Everybody out there is smarter than you. Joke. Joke. Is it that bad in here? It's a joke. The smart people say yes. That's all I have to say. Smart people say yes. The Lord shall open up his treasure to thee, the heavens to give rain unto thy land in, in its season and to bless all the works of thy hands, and thou shalt lend... Thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. Wait a second. Can we talk about the natural... For a second, can we talk about the natural? Who's running all the banks? Besides China. China thinks they have it all. But I think, the, I think Israel has more money than all of them. They just know how to hide it better. Come on. 
come on, that's just naturally. But listen, spiritually, listen, you got a treasure inside of you. You got something greater than what money can offer. And when you start lending it out to them, my God. Try it. Don't put usury on it, though. Don't expect anything in return. That's in there, too. You can read about that. See, God, God knows how to, he put it all in here, right? So he tells us how to live. That's why at the beginning of this chapter, you've got to read everything was before till you get to here. And he gives you the whole breakdown of everything, how to live your life. That's Old Testament. Really? You want to know how the New Testament works? You better know how the old, because they go hand in hand. Because it's no longer written out here. He's writing it in here. This is where he wants it, in here. Not just to stay in there. He wants it to come out. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above and thou shalt be above, above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If that thou hearken unto the commandment of the Lord thy God, which I have commanded thee this day, to observe and to do them. That word observe, I looked it up. You know what it means? Do you really know what that word means? It's to hedge about. Remember, oh, this. see, you did it. Flashbacks. This is the flashback day. Remember when Pastor Dale brought in the girdle and stuck it on his head? Do we all remember that? What was that for? Gird up your loins of your mind. Because if you don't, you don't know what will happen. What's girdles for? To make you look thin. Remember Auntie Jo? Oh my God, I can't believe he wants one of my girdles. I can still picture her doing that. Huh? Nobody did, but I tell you what, how many years later we're still talking about it? Does it still affect you? Did it get to you? And the ones who didn't ever see him do it, I'm going to tell you what it does. It, I don't have a girdle. See, we're up to modern day clothing. It's stretchable. Thank God that whitey tighties are gone. Lord, I had to do something to get somebody laughing. I'm sorry. And thou shalt not go out aside from any of the words which I have commanded thee this day, to the right hand or to the left, or go after any other gods to serve them. Why did I read that? Don't have a clue. All I know is I woke up this morning and I said, Lord, here it is, Thursday again. I have nothing. But this is what I want you to do. And he laughed. <laughs> and literally, I opened it up, and I just started reading it. It just opened up to there. And I said, you know what? This is a blessing that never stops. And it's a, I said, Lord, your blessings are so great. Your promises are so good. It doesn't matter if I, everything that I thought and I think that should happen, it doesn't happen. It doesn't matter. Your blessings are for sure and true. That's, that's it. I don't care if I don't ever prophesy again. I don't care if I don't ever say another word again. All I want to do is satisfy him. That's all what matters. And I know in satisfying him that words will come out. Other things will come out. Because you want to know something, it's in there. Remember the song I played on Sunday? The king is here. He's here. 
I've been singing that song since Sunday. Every now, every now and then it comes to mind. The king is here. No matter where I'm at, the king is here. He can't help it. He's here. Is he speaking all the time? No. Really? I don't think. Now, this could be me. I don't think he's speaking all the time. Sometimes he just wants to hear what you have to say, and then he'll answer you. Amen? Amen. Shall we stand? Yes.